Hey, I'm Daniel Snyder. This is Weekend Byte. Today, I'm joined by Seeking Alpha's head of quantitative, Stephen Kress. This guy is the real deal. He's the founder of the Seeking Alpha Quant System, which removes all human bias from stock analysis and really levels the playing field for all investors. Steve, it's great to have you back on the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Yeah, so before we dive into the juicy and exciting news you're here to share with all of us today, uh, can we, let's just, for the audience members that may not know what quantitative trading or what the quant is or anything like that, can you just give them a brief rundown so that they're caught up to speed real quick? Yeah, absolutely. You, you have uh, the world of quantitative analysis now, and most people will compare that to uh, general stock picking or what we call qualitative analysis, which is, is just more conventional. Uh, first, I have to let you know, I used to be an equity research analyst. So I'm very familiar with the process of how an analyst works. And I got to tell you, it is a slow manual process to assess one stock at a time. And it's even slower when you have to compare that stock to the rest of the sector and all the stocks in the sector. As an analyst, you're manually reviewing balance sheets, cash flow statements, income statements, PR releases, annual reports, quarterly reports, uh, and hundreds of financial metrics one at a time. And you're trying to get an assessment of what this company looks like based on all that information. The quant world is a data-driven process, and we use the power of computers to process all this information. So all this manual effort is programmed into an outcome. Uh, in fact, there's no way within human bounds that a person can keep up with the speed and accuracy of a computer processing 4,000 stocks with all these data metrics and information. And it does it just in a few hours. Uh, for an individual, it takes days just to assess one stock, let alone 4,000 stocks. Uh, in order to filter out the strong from the weak, CK Alpha uses this computer process and we grade each stock by five core factors. Uh, and these are mo the factors that most fundamental analysts look at. And these are the factors that I looked at when I was an analyst and I did it manually. We're looking at value, growth, profitability, momentum, and something else we add in is what we call analyst EPS revisions. To do this, we compare the relevant metrics for each stock to the same metrics for other stocks in the sector. This strategy helps us to pick the best in class in a timely manner. And in most cases, traditional stock picking is also based on old data. So as I said, it's very labor intensive. And by the time you get all your information together, you know, either days or weeks have passed. Um, when we're doing it from a quantitative perspective, where uh, again, it's driven by the power of computers, we can take all that data for uh, thousands and thousands of stocks and do it in just a few hours. I can, matter of fact, I could never imagine in this day and age making an investment decision based on data that's weeks, if not months old. So uh, from my perspective, you know, that is really the core difference between quantitative uh, or quantum mental investing and conventional investing. You're really taking the power of computers and you're assessing data in a timely manner uh, compared to sort of just slogging it out one stack at a time. I hope that answers your question, Dale. Yeah, it definitely does. I mean, we obviously all know now that data is king, right? We, we've seen it since I think it was the 70s or the 80s when Jim um, created the Renaissance Fund and was, you know, going and using math and, and data just has overtaken the entire market. So you definitely have created a system which helps all of us. So I really appreciate it. I got to say that first and foremost. Um, but we have this new this new exciting product, which just launched not too long ago. Congratulations on the launch, by the way, to Thank you and the team. Um, very exciting times here at Seeking Alpha. So why don't you, I'll leave it up to you. Why don't you just go ahead and give the audience a little bit of rundown about what the infamous Alpha Picks is? Dale, uh, thanks so much for setting it up for me. You teed it up perfectly. <laughs> but that, you know that's what we want to bring forward today. And uh, it's really Alpha Picks is designed for individuals that don't have a lot of time, that do want to be consistent investors, but don't have either the resources to do it on their own or really just lack a lot of time. And it's interesting. One of my colleagues said to me today, he asked me what I thought about this new service. And this new research service 
it reviews 13,000 actionable ideas that are peer reviewed research with complete performance and real time alerts every day, like 13,000 a day. And all I can think to myself is like, I would never even be able to get to my email box again or even be able to see my kids again if I had to review 13,000 ideas every day. Uh, it, it's just not possible. And that's one of the things that I love about AlphaPix. Um, AlphaPix does all this work for you. So you don't have to worry about advisory services that are bringing you 13,000 ideas or stockbrokers that are giving you their opinion or newsletters that are providing opinions or advisors that are providing suggestions. This does the work for you. Uh, it's the beauty, the brilliance of AlphaPix is all this work is done. We've taken the state of the art computer model that filters out the strongest ideas and the strongest stocks. I don't even want to say ideas. They're really the strongest stocks based on investment metrics and criteria that we rank and score. And what Alpha Picks does is it takes the power of that process down to just two stock picks a month. And how does it work? It's pretty simple. As an individual, you get an email notification. You could look at the Alpha Pick um, email, which contains a rundown of why we like this stock and why we think it should be part of your portfolio. It's very transparent. Uh, it covers the company's growth, the company's valuation framework, uh, the profitability of the company. And it's not a long article. It's pretty succinct and clear, but very transparent. So you get that notification. You decide to buy the stock. Uh, you hold on to your alpha pick recommendation until you get a notification to sell, or you can take a profit when you're happy with your return. Uh, as I mentioned, with each recommendation, you get a detailed explanation of why each stock is rated so highly. There's very little white noise. And again, you know you're getting picks that have come from a very strong quant model that has assessed stocks you know, purely on their, the merit of its metrics compared to other companies in the same sector. So we really try to take the lay work out for you, and we simply bring forward the two best ideas of our quant platform. Yeah, Steve, I was actually, it's, it's funny you mentioned some of this stuff because I was just having a conversation this morning with a very well, very well known analyst out on the street. And we were talking about the issue is that there's so many stocks, right? It's so hard to analyze everything. And there's, there's plenty of areas in the market to make money, right? But when you start to have too many selections as an investor, you don't even know where to start. So that's where I really love what you've done. And I was going to ask you about the criteria. You kind of went into it already. Um, so just kind of for our audience, how do we communicate how this product is different than this, what they might consider as similar products out on the market today? Yeah, well, there, there are no questions about it. There, I feel like there's as many uh, competitors to uh, Alpha Picks as there are stocks in the market. There's a lot of them. Uh, yeah. You have big companies, you have big brokerage firms, and then you have like individual advisors as well. So there's a lot out there. Uh, and it would be hard for me to dig into the exact process used by these firms. Um, however, I can state that many of them are not completely data driven and they're often bound by subjective opinions or specific trading strategies. Alpha Picks is identifying stocks that are strong on the collective characteristics of value, growth, profitability momentum, and importantly, analyst earnings estimate revisions. Uh, for each stock, we score these investment characteristics against its relative sector, and we rank the stocks based on these strengths. So you could look at a list of all the 4,600 stocks and how they're ranked based on these metrics, or when you're on CK Alpha's platform, you can take a look at the sectors, the 11 GEC sectors, and see stocks ranked that way. Uh, the point of Alpha Picks is that we go through this process, uh, we eliminate all the white noise, and we really filter down uh, the strength of this process to two stocks per month that are fundamentally very strong. And uh, you know, we back tested this as well, going back 12 years, uh, just taking the two recommendations of the month, and the performance is very, very strong versus the S&P 500. So I think a question might come to mind. We're talking about the factor grades. We're talking about fundamentals of companies. 
and what the system is covering. Um, but obviously, some investors worry about what's happening in the macro macroeconomic environment, whether you're talking about interest rates, whether you're talking about inflation, whether you're talking about um, variable changes in the credit markets. I mean, how does the system tune for this? Does it ignore it? Does it just focus and, and double down on, on the algorithm? Or, or does it take that into effect as well? Uh, it does take it into effect. And it's a really important part of our overall process. Uh, we, we look at history. And we take a, a company's financials as they're reported from a company. So we're looking at uh, past growth rates and profitability and valuation. But importantly, we're looking at the future as well. And, and indirectly, we incorporate this into our model by looking at consensus estimates from professional Wall Street analysts. And we're looking at their revenue estimates, their growth estimates. And it's the job of these professional analysts to incorporate these macroeconomic factors and also industry factors into their models. Uh, as a result, we count for the future through the analyst estimates that we bring into our model. In fact, as I mentioned, a big element to our quant model is when an analyst changes their estimates, we absorb those changes into our model by the next day. So it keeps our whole process real time. And people could trust when they're looking at one of the quant recommendations, they know that the data has been refreshed every single day so it's not stale data. When they make an investment decision, that is fresh data that they're looking at. Uh, and again, that gets incorporated into our overall quant model, which gets filtered down into alpha picks. So people don't have to do the work. We do the work for them. You guys really have, and you continue to deliver time and time again. I mean, everything you and the team work on has just been tremendous for the retail investor. It literally, like I said at the beginning, it literally levels the playing field. I don't have to worry about what's going on at a broker house or an investment firm or at a bank or anything like that anymore because we got a system like AlphaPix today. So let's go ahead and leave it there, Steve. Thanks for taking the time to break down AlphaPix for us. And uh, we're going to leave a link for everyone to go check it out under this video. So I, we encourage everybody to do so. Thank you, Daniel. All right. Now, let's keep the show going and get into next week's Catalyst Watch. Just a reminder that these are notable items that typically have the power to move stock prices or sometimes the entire market. So they're always worth noting. The biggest item next week will be Jackson Hole starts next Thursday which investors will be waiting for headlines from the event to hopefully gain some more insights into how the Fed is thinking about the economy, especially since we've gotten new data points, right? Tuesday, we're going to get new home sales. Wednesday, we'll bring durable goods and pending home sales. And Thursday, we'll get the GDP revised number from Q2. And it's going to be interesting to see if it gets revised any higher from the negative 0.5% that was announced earlier. And then Friday, we'll get the Fed's favorite inflation gauge, the core PCE index. Now, on the earnings front, we remain retail focused with companies such as Macy's, Nordstrom, Urban Outfitters, and Dick's Sporting Goods all announcing next week. But there's also a few favorites out of the tech and semi sector as well with NVIDIA, Salesforce, Snowflake, and Splunk Inc. And for the, credit, the Reddit crowd out there, that has obviously been watching the whole Bed Bath & Beyond saga happening. Well, they're going to get an earnings announcements from Peloton and Zoom when they announce as well. And everyone, that wraps it up for this week. We want to say congratulations to Leslie and her family on their new kid coming into the world. And also, we can't wait to see our main man, Kim Khan, come back and join us again next episode. But before we get out of here, please do us a favor. Like, subscribe, follow, comment, leave a podcast rating review, depending on where you're watching or listening to this. And don't forget to go check out Alpha Picks. I cannot like stress this enough. The Seeking Alpha R&D and product teams have been working around this clock on this project all year just to deliver for you. And we think you're really gonna love it. So go check it out. Have a great weekend and we'll see you all again next week.